All right. So I know we've kind of already discussed this, but I would just love to maybe hear from, um, you know, you all, I guess, a little bit more about negotiation, some of the common negotiation mistakes and any strategies for successful negotiations. Just really quickly, maybe one or two points each. Yeah, the first mistake is to not negotiate. That's your first mistake. If you don't negotiate, that's a mistake. Um, the second one is not having the data and the facts to back it up. Anytime you're going into a negotiation conversation, you want to make sure you have the data, meaning your education, what the role requires versus what you're experiencing, what you're bringing to it. Um, Angela did a great job of doing that earlier, talking about your her role and how she advocated for herself. You have to have those facts and that data because that's your support to fight for the uh, excuse me the salary that you deserve. And for me, I say, um, you know, some of the top websites I have used to conduct my research um, during my interview process. So like for me, before I you know, proceed to like the final rounds of interview, every step I'm like conducting a lot of in-depth research, especially on salary, so that I know I'm not like shortchanging myself. Mm -hmm. um, popular websites to use, use Glassdoor. Glassdoor is amazing because it's going to give you, um, I would say like, actual salaries of employees working there and it's self-reported. So that's super accurate for you to see like, oh, is there a, a role uh, within this X company that has already mentioned what their salary looks like? That's going to give you a good ballpark. Also, I would say use salary.com, payscale.com. Um, those websites are wonderful where you can put in the actual job title, the city you're in, and it's going to give you a median average. Um, always use that as a benchmark. Um, I think there are various states now where by law they have the company have to mention what their sell uh, and their annual sell, uh, salary bandwidth is. So just make sure that you know like if you know you have the skills and you're checking every single bullet point off of the job description or you know like you're bringing a lot of experiences um, and skill sets into this role that don't aim for the lower um, tier of that range, right? Like be confident, aim for middle, higher, if not the max. If you know, like I check off all 100% of the bullet points, interview after interview, I'm bringing all these new insights and I know my interview panel are just being wowed by me. So there's no reason why I should take the lower end of the bracket versus the higher end. So, you know, do your research and then don't, never hurt to ask. That's true. Johnny, one, one question came in really quickly, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. Um, can employers take back an offer if they consider your counter your counter offer too high? Ooh, can they take back the offer? So, <laughs> no, but yes. Um, they can give you a short window. So, if you, you know, don't accept the offer at a certain time, they can. If it's outside of the range, that if you try to negotiate and it's completely outside of the range, they'll say, you know, I'm sorry, we can't go any higher than this amount. Um, so they say, well, we're going to have to rescind the offer, but it does not happen often, but it, it can happen. I'm not going to tell you it can't happen. Um, it can happen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Larry, did you have any comments about um, salary negotiation strategies? Uh, yes. Always value yourself, your experiences and what, what you've done throughout the years and be secured because that's the way like you have to sell yourself high higher than lower always and make sure i mean just go from your experiences and your degrees or what you did before and like i said do not be afraid of uh, selling yourself higher always like i remember a conversation we you and i we, or we had before and you were saying sell yourself higher you have the experience you have the education go go for it so what I learned from experience is do not be afraid of saying or selling yourself higher. So it's so important. And like I also, I also did a research, always research what the, the actual company organization is actually providing or giving the salary mm -hmm. and do a research. So they see the actual range. If it's from 70 to 80 or 80, 90, 90, 100, always do the research and go higher and sell yourself higher and that's from experience and I and I like I said never had the experience like counterpart or something and go back with a different amount. But um I learned that it's like selling yourself, like selling something. So you have to be secure of your what you did before, secure of your experiences and education that you have. Thank you. Yeah, I would add one more thing. So 
salary is based on your base salary. You know, companies sometimes have bonus structures. Sometimes they have RSUs or restricted stock units. Make sure you find out what your base salary is. Um, as someone who's recruited, we're really good at being like, okay, yeah, this is your salary. Did it, is this the base salary, right? Ask the question, is this the base? What is the base salary? Also, what is the bonus structure? What is the percentage? When am I eligible for the bonus, right? Because sometimes or most often you won't be eligible for the bonus until the, the next year. Some companies do have, you know, that, okay, you'll get the bonus for this year, but you want to ask that question as well as what restricted stock units, you know, any equity, you want to know the total compensation, but make sure you get the differentiation between the base salary and all the other things. Okay. And the other thing to add on top of that is that's why research is important is because um, salaries for the same role can vary state to state and city to city. Mm -hmm. So for example, a software engineering level one salary in the Bay Area in San Francisco can be super different than a salary of a, a software engineering one, let's say in Atlanta, Georgia. So, you know, you know, some people say like, oh, I've heard my friend in Google in San Francisco is earning at hundred and twenty thousand dollars <laughs> as an entry level software engineering one. I bet you they're not going to offer that salary in Atlanta because of like various standards of living. Companies have different like pricing structures. So do that research. And like you should always feel empowered to ask your hiring person in the very first interview, like what is the salary bandwidth for this role? You should just get that out of the way in the very first interview. So then you know that, oh, this is the range that they're willing to pay. But then as they ask you, and they're usually going to ask, what is your desired salary bandwidth? Like they're not going to tell you first. That's why do your research first. So you won't sound silly like applying for, let's say, a non-California job. But you're like, oh, I just got out of college. And yeah, I want $180,000 as like a <laughs> software engineer. Like you're going to sound really silly because if you do your research, you'll see like, oh, let's say, I don't, I don't know, some random city in Alabama. It's a $70,000 job. And that is the capital right. of that city, right? So do that research so that you sound well-researched, intelligent, and informed. And that's how you can continue to snowball the whole um, contract uh, or salary negotiation with HR. 100% agree. <laughs> totally.